folks, welcome to the Seven Figure Network Podcast. My name is Melford Bibbins. Today I'm joined by Cindy Kelly. And it's funny, we were just having a conversation that we grew up right in the same area. We know lots of the same places. So it's so funny when this industry brings so many people together because Cindy lives on the other side of the country as me, yet we knew so many of the same places from where we grew up. So that's why I love this show because I get to hear everybody's stories and about what not only drove them into this industry, but why they are who they are because we are who we grew up to be. So Cindy, hey, thanks for being on today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me. So I got to hear what drove you into the network marketing industry in the first place. All right. So let's uh, let's rewind the clock a little bit. I did not grow up in an entrepreneurial family at all. My upbringing was very corporate. Hmm. So um, going to school, my education, my family, the people I was surrounded by, everything was very like cookie cutter, like corporate, right? That's all I knew. Like I didn't even know what being an entrepreneur was. Like I, I knew the title, but I didn't know what more than that, right? It was just like, it wasn't even something I thought about. It never crossed my mind. So as I was, you know, sort of kind of moving up the corporate ladder. I, I'm somebody that was very ambitious, very driven. I, I had a very successful career in corporate America. I realized it took me some time, like hindsight's 2020, but I realized that what I was doing was constantly trying to get the, the next best job within a company, mm. change companies for a better opportunity. Like I was constantly this hamster in a wheel trying to get to a destination instead of enjoying a journey. Mm. And so I found success at the time. I would have told you I was very successful because I had money. I was buying homes by the time I was 23 years old. Um, I was probably one of the only ones making a multiple six figure income in my twenties because I had grit and determination and drive. And like, you know, there's just certain behaviors that are innately within some of us you know, goal-driven individuals. And so on paper, it all looked really beautiful. I could have a nice car, have a nice house. I could go on vacation, but I couldn't because what I realized when you trade your time for dollars is that when I'm not there, like I was always in sort of a, a sales management capacity in, in different companies and in different industries. But part of doing that meant one, there's a, a consumer involved that you had to be present for. So a company that would want me there. And two, uh, if I'm not there, like would the potential profits be down? And so all of this, like I was valued, was I valued or did I provide value? So was I valued as a human, as an individual, or was I only valued because I was a you know, a really hard worker who knew how to make a company money. But when I wasn't present and I suddenly wanted some time off and I wanted some personal time, like, would it be the same? And so I did not realize all of this at the time. What shifted for me was I became a mom. Okay. My older son is turning 11. So 11 years ago, um, I became a mom and things kind of changed. So here's what I realized, like, but all I ever wanted in life was to be a mom, but not all. Like as a kid, it was like, yes, I know what I really want in life is to be a mom, to be a wife and to have a family. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean I wanted to do it instead of having a successful career. It didn't mean that I didn't want all that drive, that ambition, those, that, that determination to like make something, to do something like that didn't mean that I didn't want that just because all I ever wanted was to be a mom, right? Like I wanted both. And I found myself at a crossroads where I was like, huh, now as a mom, I'm missing moments. Like, I'm not home for certain things. I'm working around the clock to have this wealth but is that really wealth if I can't enjoy the things that are so important to me? So do I just throw in the towel and say, I'm going to be the best mom you've ever seen? I thought about it. And then I thought, that's not who I am either. So how do I find my path? Like, what's my journey look like to be able to take all of this fire and passion and desire to have massive success in a career? 
And how do I be a really amazing present mom, which by the way, really amazing mom is a work in progress, but <laughs> how do I try to be a really present mom um, and not allow someone else to control every aspect of like when I show up, where I show up, what, what I can be a part of. And that led me to network marketing. It led me to an industry that actually rewarded me for being a successful mom, that actually rewarded me for building up other people instead of building up others. And, oh, but by the way, if you're not there to, to help them, like you need to be present, it actually completely changed and it gave me a totally new like lease on life and an outlook on why more people don't understand. Because I can tell you right now, as an overachiever in high school, um, in college, um, I mean, I graduated college. I was only 20 years old with, with straight A's. I was, I was always advancing as fast as I could. And at no point, in that journey, did anyone ever say, you, Cindy, should be a network marketer? <laughs> Never happened. So um, I had to find my own way because what I learned, the trajectory of my career was going to take me in a place I didn't want to go. And so I had to find what worked for me and find a path that allowed me to have both areas of my life that were important to me, both that present family and that career um, allowed me to thrive in both areas. Did you come in because of, I mean, I know you came in for the freedom of the business, yeah. but was it the opportunity because you knew that the income was going to be limitless and how much more money you could make doing this? Or did you actually just fall in love with the product and a byproduct of it was finding that this business could be perfect for you? No, I was not one of those fell in love with the product. I was one of those that saw the industry and thought, hold on, are, are you saying I could make that doing this? Um, so like I could just talk to people, share a really amazing product that I use and would share for free. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that doing that could replace my 80 hour a week corporate grind. Hold on. Uh, are you, did I miss something? <laughs> so, okay. So, um, yes. And how fast can I do that? <laughs> yes. And here's my credit card. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, what do I need to buy? How do you sign me up? Like, mm -hmm. could you talk any faster? I'm ready. Yeah. I was, I was definitely that person that saw the vision. And, you know, years before, let me think how long, maybe five or so years before I really began in network marketing, I had been exposed to network marketing. Like I don't, I didn't even know what network marketing was. Like when I was younger and like in my corporate kind of career and, and somewhere in that corporate career, I remember being exposed to a couple different companies that were network marketing. Um, like I had used the product. I thought they were really good. I was excited about it. I didn't even realize that I was a distributor, mm -hmm. but I shared with all my friends because that's what I do. And they were like, here you go. You're the top person. And I was like, huh? Okay. Oh, uh, this, what? So like, I don't even like talk about those in my network marketing career because they were just like quick little moments of, oh, I used the product and shared really quick. And, but it was, it was, at that point in time, I wasn't looking at it as a business. Mm -hmm. I just remember that being my piece of that's what network marketing is. And I remember going to somebody's house. I mean, this is in a different sort of world than Zoom and, and social marketing and like, all right, all of it was different. But I remember going to someone's huge, beautiful mansion. And this is back when I'm like completely before kids, like wasn't looking to do anything career-wise. And I remember all of these like, be like Jags and Rolls Royces and just like cars pulling up to this house. And I was like, what am I, am I in a movie? Like what is going on right now? And I get there and they do this like presentation. And I literally can remember to this day thinking, is this what their job is? They, they just get paid to like tell people this. And then they leave and they drive away in a $300,000 car. I was like, this is what? And so that was my first like 
I don't know what they're doing, but it's pretty cool. And, but my life went on, like I kept going in my life, like the way it, you know, I, I was in the middle of a career, like, but that was my first, like, and so when I fast forward, like five years later, when I realized as a mom, like I wasn't present and I was in a space to make some shift. That was my opinion of network marketing. I was like, oh, what those people did? Those people with nice cars and fancy houses that I didn't think worked? I was like, I want that. I'll take that job. Um, truth be told, I work a lot, but it is on my own terms. And no one ever has to tell me when to work, why to work, how to work, who to work for, um, you know, any of the details. We get to have that freedom to choose. Amen. The freedom we all love. Hey, yeah. let's talk about you being a high achiever. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to train people who aren't because you're a one percenter and you know it. You are a one yeah. percent kind of person. So how are you building your team when you're talking to folks who probably aren't as ri ridiculously driven to success as you are? When you're talking to quote unquote normal people, what, what is your, you know, first let's talk about just how do you personally recruit and yeah. B, how do you train your team to recruit? Yeah. Such a good question. So how do I personally recruit posture, mindset, um, belief in what you do? Like if you don't have a hundred percent confidence in something, it's really hard to get someone else to do something, especially if they're not a high achiever. Like if they're a high achiever, that one percenter might figure it out on their own. If they're not, it's all going to be about systems. And that's truly, um, really kind of ties right into the other question that you asked, which is how do I help them? And I realized this, you, you leave your ego at the door because this entire business is about duplication. It's not about what you do. It's about who you serve. And it doesn't really matter. Like if I have an audience, whether, you know, I have a platform, I, um, I'm a doctor, I have patients, I'm a gym owner. I have, I have clients. I, I have a huge social media platform. Um, I'm an influencer in, in some, right? Like yeah. if I do that, but nobody on my team does that. Guess what? I just got, I just got another J O B yeah. where I'm working all the time. Very well That's said. not network marketing. Network marketing is, and this is like the part that I wonder sometimes, like if people got this, wouldn't everybody be doing this? Like network marketing is a leveraged business. Mm -hmm. So in the corporate world, it was an, you know, my job was to hire the very, very best people. If I could hire the very best people, then I could create massive abundance for me, for the company that I'm hired to do so for. It's not any different in the space of network marketing. If you're trying to build something, you need to bring in more quality people because that's leverage. I cannot be everywhere all the time supporting every human. So what do I do? I find uh, those couple of one percenters that want to lead, that want to do what I do. And then the 99%, I need to help them win. So how do you help them win? Systems, duplication. I cannot duplicate me, but I can give you all the scripts that I use. I can give you everything that's in my brain. I can give you all of the tools, all of the things to share on social media, um, all of the training that you could ever want. I could give it to you in a box and say, if you're willing to do the work, this system duplicates. Why is that so important? Because I'm not always going to be there to talk to your person, just like you're not going to always be there to talk to the person and so on and so on. But every single one of us can plug into a system that works and that changes everything. So it's all about becoming system dependent and not, and not people dependent. When you're people dependent, you're not really getting the whole concept of leverage and therefore you're maybe tapping into the affiliate side of network yeah. marketing which is nothing wrong with i mean hey it's great but are you really tapping into the whole aspect of leverage and how many people do i know versus how many people do we know as a collective yes very well said you know you just made me think of something not everybody i interview has had such a, a diverse corporate background as you you've really been in, in the corporate side and speak to please the great resignation the fact that so many corporate folks right now are looking for a new opportunity 
what would you say to somebody who is in corporate? And again, a hard charger, you know, somebody who's really, you know, done well in the corporate world, but, you know, is hearing the, the gossip of gig economy, great resignation, you know, all the things that are driving people out of offices. What would you say to somebody today that may, like you, maybe never heard of network marketing, but is feeling the vibe and, and seeing on LinkedIn, every other post is about the great resignation. What would you say to the, that person that would make them want to look to network marketing? Yeah. So I think the first thing would be knowing what the potential objections are, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are in the corporate world that have the wrong idea about network marketing. Like if I hear one more person ask if it's a pyramid scheme or actually, I, I actually like it when people ask questions that are ridiculous mm -hmm. because then I can ask questions right back and be I like, know. okay. Right. And so like, so debunk whatever myths are out there, but the difference between network marketing, and this is where sometimes an overachiever um, will get it, but sometimes they won't, uh, and a corporate job is in a corporate job, typically you're paid uh, some sort of a dollar amount based on your skill set immediately. Now you might be all salary, you might be all commission you could be you know a combination but it's typically if you're an all commission job it's typically commission earned like that month like it's it, when you go to an employer you know there's a responsibility of the employer to compensate you for hours worked yeah. so with network marketing you have to be okay with delayed gratification mm -hmm. and see that's that's a big issue for a lot it of is, people and so if I was coming from the corporate world, I would have that conversation and I would explain what the build for the long game is. Like, are you looking for a legacy build? Are you looking for something that you can build today where, you know, a hundred years from now, you know, your, you know, grandchildren's grandchildren are, you know, are talking about you like, oh, well, my great grandmother, she's the one that changed the trajectory of our family forever. Like, are you willing to do the things to potentially break a cycle um, of what's happening in your world? Or are you not? Mm -hmm. Are you somebody that's already had success in the corporate world? You're having success, but you realize, because there are people that are not successful that need to completely shift their paradigm. There are people that are successful. Either way, there are people in the corporate world that should be looking at network marketing. Are you somebody that is having a successful career, but the truth is, what this has showed you through a pandemic is that nothing is for sure, right? Mm -hmm. Your job isn't for sure. What if your company goes under? Mm -hmm. What if your company goes bye bye? Mm -hmm. Like all of that hard work, what do you get? Um, what if you were a mom and your kids school, suddenly it's homeschool only, and that doesn't work for your job and you literally have to choose and you don't have a choice, but you can't do your job anymore. Like, mm -hmm. what if, right? There were so many what ifs that people didn't anticipate. So before the pandemic, we had all of the people that like, you know, maybe we need more income or maybe we should consider an additional stream, but I'm, I'm solid here. Through the pandemic, I think it shifted where people realized, hey, it's important that I'm in control. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I might've given 20 years to a company and I don't have control. That's pretty scary. So when you build something for yourself as an entrepreneur, you have that control. And what I love about the network marketing space is you're in business for yourself, but you're not in business by yourself. So you partner up with a team of people that get you, that are like you, like-minded, and you find your people. You find your people and you do it together and you don't compete against one another because truly this entire industry is collaboration over competition. Yep, very well said. Thinking about today, you know, it's and I'm not going to get negative because I'm a pretty Pollyanna guy. So I don't want to talk about any negativity, but you know, given the fact that we were, you know, mostly belly to belly, then you know, a lot of people made the pivot. Everybody was online then. Now we're in kind of the hybrid model. What what are you shifting to nowadays? What's what's working best for you and your team right now? Are you guys still purely online, or are you starting to segue into the the hybrid model and starting to do a little more belly to belly stuff? I think there's nothing better than belly to belly if you can do it. So I went. You know, I built my business, um, I built my company for eight and a half years. Eight and a half years ago, social media was not the same as it is now. Amen. Okay. So when I built it, it was literally pick up a phone, 
have a conversation. This is what I'm going to do. This is why I think you'd be a good fit. Would you consider? Like, talk to me. Real people, real human connection. I've shifted and I build online. I build online a lot now. Mm -hmm. I meet new people online. It's a great way to meet people you would have never met, right? I love the whole idea of social selling. I Mm -hmm. absolutely love branding and meeting people and finding your tribe. I love it. But if you think about it, what's the point of branding online if eventually it's not to take it offline and have relationships? So I think there are people that build exclusively online. There are people that build exclusively offline. But if you're going to build a team, you better know how to do both because you're going to have team members, some that favor one, some that favor the other. So for me, it's absolutely um, branding online, working together. It's fun. It's it's a way to have community. It's a way to meet way more people than you could possibly meet on your own. But at the end of the day, the more you can have belly to belly, it's almost like this Zoom that we're doing right now, right? If you send somebody a text, um, it might be a little impersonal, but it's short, it's sweet, it gets the point done. For the most conversations, it's perfect. But when you have something a little bit more intimate, you might want to pick up the phone and talk to them. But the next step might be like, hey, this is like, I've never met you before and I want to talk to you. What does this person look like? What's their energy like? Oh my gosh, we can do something like a Zoom, right? So like, then it takes it up a notch. What's the next best thing after that is person to person, belly to belly. So I think there's different levels of engagement and it's nice that in the, you know, in between we have different ways now that we can all communicate. But I also think that when you can be one-on-one with somebody and they can feel your heart and they can get to know you, there's nothing that would beat that connection. What would you tell somebody that was starting today? I would love to, I would love to hear what advice you would give to somebody who just got their first kit. They they just enrolled under you day one. How would you? So, yeah. So I would give them, I would make it simple. Like don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. Don't make this more complicated than you have to, because what happens when you make things super complicated is most people are like, no idea what you just said. Like it just completely, you lost me, completely lost me. I want to know why you're doing this, what your heart is in it for and get to know them, like get to know people, um, get a core group of people together that either, you know, want to use your product, use your service, partner with you, and then work together systematically to grow because momentum is truly magical. Mm -hmm. Growing a business slow is really hard. When you grow something slow, you're kind of like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. You don't really get the benefit of that growth. But when you grow fast and you're like two steps forward and then this person's two steps forward and then this person, right? Like that energy of what you can do together is amazing. So find your people and commit. Don't ever do something and not really commit to it because if you don't really commit, it's going to be really hard for you to have success. And it's going to be really hard for people to trust that you're the right person to join. If they don't see your commitment level, what's the chances that they're going to think you're the right coach or mentor to help them get to spaces in their life that maybe they haven't been. Yeah. Love it. Uh, your son is 11, so he's not quite mm-hmm. ready to join the business yet, but I know he's seen the mom hustle. And we, and we talked about the fact that you've, you've sort of broken that family trend of, you know, everybody behind you was corporate, corporate, corporate. Now you've gone off and shown what can happen. D- do you work together with your husband? Is he involved in the business as well? He's not, he's, he's still doing the corporate, the corporate job. Um, although he did switch when I started in network marketing, like he used to work to like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And he doesn't do that anymore. Um, but you know what, my kids, I have two boys they are 11 and we'll be turning 11 and eight this summer. And my older son, when I asked him what, what does he want to be when he grows up? And he said, he's either going to be a professional athlete or he's going to work with mom. And I just, I love it because by all means be a professional athlete and take care of mom. Totally okay with that too. (laughs) But I love that he sees what I do and he knows that I've never, ever missed. I mean, he plays football, baseball, basketball, like Mm -hmm. I'm there, right? Like I do work a lot and I never tell people that I don't work a lot. I think that's so important because I never want to deceive anybody about what this industry looks like. I never want to say this is just this elusive, like, you know, here you do this and like, it's not. But what he knows is that 
And if he has a practice to go to, I don't have to say, oh, I can't be there. My boss won't let me leave. Or if he has a game, I'm so sorry, mommy has to miss it. I have work. Like he sees what it's like to be able to be present for the things that matter. Both of my kids see that. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. It's priceless. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, uh, do me a favor. And how can folks contact you? If, if somebody wants to reach out and, and meet you personally, what is the best yeah. way to contact you? So I am on Instagram at Organic Boss Mom. I'm on Facebook at Cindy Kelly, C-I-N-D-I-K-E-L-L-Y. Those are the two best ways. Beautiful. Perfect. And now my favorite question, what yeah. is your six-month goal? My six-month goal is to create more of me. Mm-hmm. Because it. a long time ago, I had a lot of goals for myself mm-hmm. of what I wanted. And I realized that when I shifted off of that and I focused on who I helped along the journey, I, I became more selfless. I became I became a better human. And I also had better success. Mm. Um, so I love helping other people. Like, it's really hard to win in certain ways and then not be able to share that abundance with others. So my goal is, this is my six month goal. It's my three, it's really my, my ongoing goal, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's to create more of me. It's to help other people that you know, are either working the nine to five and getting that 3% raise every year or making all the money they could ever imagine where they're living a lifestyle that they cannot sustain if they retire right? Like how many people do we know that are high achievers that are living this life that is great, but it, they can't afford it if they don't show up. Like, so they wonder what does retirement look like? I don't have yeah. a pension. I don't have a plan. Like mm-hmm. what if I could show you a way? My, my goal is to help more people understand why network marketing is amazing. Like to give a, a better and a beautiful name to this space, to be able to empower others to know, like, I want to help more people win. And if I can make that sort of an impact, it comes back to me. You know what I mean? Like it comes back to me. And so to be able to know that my growth and my wins and my abundance comes from helping others, it's beautiful. That is a great goal. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cindy Kelly, thanks so much for being on today. I really appreciate it. This was it was really fun because, like I said, I don't I don't always get to talk to folks who had such a comprehensive corporate background before they got in. So it was really cool to be able to balance both plates and and then talk about how it actually affected your life. So thanks so much. I really appreciate being on today. Thank you so much, Alfred. I'm so glad that you invited me. It was great, great connecting and doing this. Thanks, Cindy. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. 